Hello friends, welcome back to another session of Data Source. Uh, in this video, we will see how the applications utilize the data source to access the data which is stored in your database. Okay, so this example is specifically for the web application. We will uh, have a GSP page. Okay, and inside GSP page, we will call our data source with the help of the JNDI name of our data source. And then we will pull the data which is stored in the database to display it on the uh, web page or you can see on your front screen. Okay, and again, I'm reiterating that this demo is specifically for the web applications where uh, I will have a GSP page, okay, and that GSP page will ask you for the parameters to provide the database, certain database details like the JNDI name of your data source, and apart from that, few more details, that table name from which you fetch the data, okay, and based on that, it will retrieve the data which is stored in your database okay so i will show you the complete code as well of the web application how the uh, uh, the code is get stored in the var file for this kind of application in web applications and then the some part of the gsp page as well from where we define the different parameters when we do the coding of gsp page okay so let let's let us first start with what is data source okay so i had posted a lot of videos on data source apart from the tuning and the basic concept of data source what are the different type of data sources as well uh, but if you haven't get chance to go through all those, then for your information, okay? So when we talk about that your application need a connection with the database, that means the application is deployed on your WebLogic server and then you have a backend database which may be running on the same machine or could be on the different machine in the high availability architecture, especially in the production environments, okay? So every time your application need a connection from the database, it has to reach to the database, right? And then it connects with the database and it log in with the username and pro password that we have provided in our data source. And then once everything is good, then it connects with the database. Right. So this is kind of expensive operations when every time you are going to a database and creating a new connection where at the, every time that data is transferring from the network and then you are getting authenticated and then the connection is getting established. It is kind of expensive operation which can degrade the performance of your application if each time your application is going to a database and going to the same phase every time. Okay, right. So to overcome that kind of a performance uh, issues, okay. Uh, there is an, a term that is called data source is defined, okay? So data source is, you can say it is a pooling which keep the connections active so that when a connection is later requested, one of the active one is used in preference to having to create a new one, okay? So whenever your data source is started, that means whenever you're starting your WebLogic server along the, with that, your data source is also getting started. And the, the parameter that you define in your data source, like the initial capacity or the maximum capacity, based on that, it will create the initial connections and those connections will be active all the time, okay? So your application, whenever you, your application need a connection from the database, it will be picked from the active connections. It will not go uh, with the same phase again and again to go to the net, uh, go to a database, authenticate, and then create the new connection because pool contain the set of active connections. Okay, and now the application take the connection from the active connections and then do the processing, whatever is necessary. Okay, so this is how the, your application get connected with the application servers. Okay, and then let us see a few more definitions of the data source. So data source, uh, you can say database connection pooling is a way to reduce the cost of opening and closing connection by maintaining a pool of open connections. Okay, this is an, another definition of the discussion that we have done, right? So this is a Another method of reducing the cost of opening and closing the connections, right? But by maintaining a pool, which is a pool of open connections, or you can say it is a pool of active connections. Okay. Another generic, generic definition in software engineering is a connection pool is a cache. Okay. So what does it mean a cache? So cache contain a kind of a data which is uh, utilized by their applications at maximum number of times. Okay. The code which is getting used. Um, most of the time in your application, it get into the cache, okay? So this is the same concept for your connection pool as well, where you have a cache of your active connections, okay, which is reused whenever an application need a connection with the database, okay? Another definition you can say connection pooling is a strategy that involves recycling database connection for multiple requests instead of closing them immediately and when a query has been resolved. So recycling in the sense, a database connection is used and then again, but it is used, then it, it again, it is returned back to your connection pool so that it can be utilized by some other uh, application request. Okay, so these are a lot of definitions of a connection pool and data sources. And hope you are clear on what exactly is data source. If you were not aware about that one, what, what exactly the concept of data source. Okay, now we will use this data source that we will create in the WebLogic console to access the data from the 
database okay right so now because we are saying that we have to uh, connect with the database and then we have to retrieve the data which is stored in a database so for that before we will create a, a table in the a user and then few tables and then we will insert some data in the tables right and this data we will fetch in our var application which we will deploy in your weblogic server okay so uh, first you have to create a user okay and if you are not aware about the database or maybe uh, you wanted to uh, gain, uh, gain your skills on the database okay then i have posted a one video on on the installation of your database on windows that is specifically for a demo purpose uh, you can install your you can download it uh, from the oracle website and then you can install in your windows machines as well for a testing purpose okay and there i have given the complete commands how you can install and then after the installation there are certain commands that you need to be aware about that one how to connect with the database how to connect with the pdbs in multi architectures uh, uh format of your database and then the initial commands that you need to run right post the installation of your database okay so that once you will follow that one after that you have to connect with the database with the help of sql plus forward slash sysdba then create a user and creating a user sql is create user username identified by the password once it is done you can grant a uh, certain kind of a privilege to your user like it can create a connections uh, to sql plus and then it can create the table procedure sequence triggers and this is the command which is you are seeing on the screen for to grant uh, this particular privilege to your users and then these are the options to connect with, with your user okay sql plus user slash password okay this is the command and if you are using the multi tenant architecture where you have a pdb in your database then the command is sql plus user slash password at the rate your host in which database is running port of your database slash and the pdb pdb name okay by this way you can create a user and you can connect with the database once you are connected these are the certain uh, command that we are, where we are creating three tables in the database one is with the name employee second is with ws catalog items and third with ws client info okay and then once the database uh, the tables are created okay you can insert some dummy data in your tables okay so here are the sql that which uh, to insert the values in all three tables okay and if you need all these sqls and the code that i am going to show you then you can write me to write to me on the email id that i have shown on the i will show you on the this particular video on the last slide okay which is digitalk.fmw at gmail.com i'm repeating again digitalk dot fmw at gmail.com you can write to me on that particular email id i will send you all the codes and the uh, sql queries and uh, to you on your email so that you can try it on your local lab as well so now we have inserted uh, uh, table data as well in, in our tables right and then we have to create a data source because our application will connect with the database with the help of data source right and for that we have to create a generic data source okay so click on your go to your admin console and this is the way how we create a data source for again if you are not aware about how to create a data source then i have posted another video on this as well how to create a data source okay so for that you have to go to your admin console and then go to services okay and then click on your uh, particular uh, data source tab and then click on generic data source okay that means new and then generic you are creating a new generic data source okay and the important thing okay that uh, the name whatever you want you can specify to your database but the jndi name should be the same which you are going to define in your code jndi i have explained in a lot of my videos so if you are not aware about the jndi then it is a lookup service okay so lookup service means since if your application need any kind of resources from the weblogic system it connect with the weblogic with the help of gndi name for example here we are saying that our application will connect with the database with the help of data source right but how my application will connect to the data source right that is with the help of gndi okay so this gndi name we will define in our application and with the help of this gndi our application can connect to this particular data sources if i have multiple i have a 10 20 or 40 data sources then to each data source i will define a gndi name and then that corresponding gndi name will define in my application and with the help of that my application will connect to the data base similarly whatever the resources maximum resources that you define in web logic like you created a uh, gms resources then you you define a G gndi name for the, your gms resources as well like to queue topics site and that is because how your application will connect to that particular gms resources okay with the help of gndi so this is the concept of gndi so here i am giving the gndi name as busy world ds busy world ds okay and this is this is a, a demo application from the oracle which they have provided on the public network okay just for our testing and demo purpose i have utilized the same one and if you as i said if you need this uh, this application code and all this information you can write to me and i will send it to you okay so now uh, you have to give the name whatever you want i have given the same name digital ds and then give the jndi name 
okay and then you have to give the database parameters what is the name of your database okay and what is the host where database is running the port of your database and the username and password which we have created initially in the uh, some time back right because we have created that our table inside that particular user so that user you have to define here in my case it is demo user and i have given the password when it is done you have to target it to the all your all of your servers in the cluster i have multiple i have two many servers in my cluster so i am deploying the same application on my cluster so i have taken the target for demo purpose if you are uh if you have created only one managed server that is also sufficient you can target your data source to that only single managed server so our data source is created now we have to deploy the var file right so deploying the var file i have given a name test ds dot var okay and test ds dot file and and what is the structure of var file okay so i'm going to post another video on the complete structure of the different archive files what is the structure of var file er file jar file how we can create that one what are the purpose of different folder structures inside that one okay but before that one okay because now here i'm explaining that about the complete code of how you, you can retrieve the data from the database with the help of application okay especially in web applications with the help of a gsp page okay so now i will tell you the basic structure of the uh war file okay so once you will create a war extract a war file or when you are going to create a war file then you will have a, this kind of a structure the two mandatory folder that you will see with the name meta hyphen inf in capital and then web hyphen inf okay apart from that if you have certain static html pages gsp pages that you can place inside the same this root folder i'm saying it is a root folder because all the content that you are seeing on the screen would be inside a root folder okay so apart from that you have a pages folder as well and then inside you can paste different kind of a pages that you have created for your web application so now what are uh, uh, what are there inside pages so i have css files cvs images includes and these are the different kind of a contents that i have the way i have designed my web application i have different kind of a images in my web application i have different kind of a formatting of my web pages okay all these formatting and data of my pages particularly in i have uh, stored inside this all the folders which is there inside the pages folder okay now when we talk about web hyphen inf okay inside that one there are certain mandatory files and folders one one is the uh you can say about descriptor file so for web application there is an important descriptor file that is called web.xml okay and apart from that there is one more file that is called weblogic.xml but that is not mandatory you can say because weblogic.xml file defines certain parameters the or descriptors for your weblogic server okay but demo purpose because i have created that file i have only web.xml file i will do a small entry in this file okay apart from that you have a src folder and the classes folder which will include your java code if you have your java code as well different you will have different class files and then you can put it inside the class files and there's certain more code inside the src folder okay and this is the entry of my web.xml file so what i have mentioned in my web.xml file is welcome file list okay so this is the welcome file list is the initial page that will be displayed when you are going to access your application so there's it you will see that welcome file name as test data source.jsp and this is the same file or same jsp page which i have placed inside my code file okay so once i will access my application this will go to the test data source.jsp okay this is my uh, main web page and now i will show you the code inside the jsp page how it will call the database this is the first part of my code okay and the content that you are showing in the red box it is the different boxes that i am going to design in my web application page okay i will design four uh, input box one for to the uh, specify the name of table second is to specify the username of your web logic third is to specify the password of your web, of your uh, of your web logic server and then the name of your dn jndi name of your data source okay so this example as I, as i said i am explaining you how your application are getting connected with the database and then it's retrieving the data from there okay so this is the part that i am designing my uh, page with four column or four tabs or you can say four text box along with the buttons okay and this is the main part which is calling my data okay so here what i am taking is that all four the four in the previous screen you saw that i have created four text boxes so all four inputs i am taking in the four string that is called data source table username and password so data source is the jndi name of my my data source table is to which table data i would like to retrieve username and password is the username and password of my weblogic server and then you will see the uh, that how you are doing a lookup of your data source their uh, their application is doing a lookup of your data source and then creating a connection from then it is uh, getting a connection from the data source and then it is selecting the data from the table with the help of exec uh, by executing a query which is stored in the sql string okay and then it will display the data onto your the screen this is the code of my jsp page and this is how your jsp page can retrieve the data from the database with the help of a data 
source, right? And then you can access the application. Okay, I have deployed the application test ts dot bar, and then the test ts was the name of my application, and the welcome list that I had specified inside my web dot xml was test data source dot jsp. So when I, once I will access my application, as you can see on the screen, the host name and the port of my managed server, then test ds slash data source test data source dot jsp. Okay, this is the web screen that you will see. Okay, and you will see a four text boxes along with the test data source, then you have where you have to enter the data source name. Okay, so this is the same JNDI name, data source name. That means it is a JNDI name, which I had given when I had created my data source. Okay, so make sure this is the same. Okay, and then the name of the table. I had created a table with the name of employee. Two more table was there. You can mention any, any one of the table to test. Then the username of your a web logic in, in on the screen you can see the the username of my web logic admin console is system and the password of my web logic admin console is web logic so i have given the same here and once you will click on test data source okay then you will see all the data whatever we have stored in our database will be retrieved on the screen page with the help of data source okay so if, as i said if you need any kind of uh, if you need this uh, test data okay this test application or code skill query then you can write me on digitalk.fmw at gmail.com and i will send you all the complete details